Hey everybody, thanks for coming to dance with me today. I'm Laura and today we are going to work on one of my favorite hacksaws. To me, this is a great move because you can do it to really fast music and it's not super exhausting. It's the ultimate rest move. In this video, I'll be leading and I'm accompanied by my wonderful friend Nicole who will be dancing the follows part. But first, thank you people of Patreon for helping to keep this video free for everyone in the world, including people like you. If you wanna join them, it's a voluntary subscription and the link is in the description. Okay, let's get into it. One of the key ways of leading and following hacksaws is that cross-body connection between your opposite arm and leg, just like basic Charleston, just like walking. You can see when my right leg is forward, my right arm is back. When Nicole's left leg is back, their left arm is forward. When we switch legs, that cross-body connection remains the same. If this feeling is new, practice basic Charleston. Every time you rock step, punch forward with that same hand and that should get you started. Let's try it together. Ready? Punch. And punch. And punch. If it's still hard, just keep practicing, it will happen. You can see how our basic Charleston lines up to create a platform for hacksaws. Here we are doing basic Charleston, and now we're still doing basic Charleston. Nicole and I are both doing basic Charleston on the left foot, but one of us begins forward and the other one begins backwards. As you feel comfortable, reach across and take your partner's hand. Feel how their movement interlocks with your movement. It's a short leap to go from Charleston to hacksaws. Okay, now that we know where we're going, let's figure out how to get into and out of it. Here's a simple entrance and exit from a few different angles. that Nicole goes straight in front of me and then comes right back to my side. I do very little movement. Nicole's transition footwork, rock step, kick step, rock step, kick step. And honestly, this is a really good rhythm to know, so we're all gonna do it together. Start with two basic Charlestons. Go ahead and practice that entrance and exit until you feel comfortable. If you need a slower speed, check out the settings gear at the bottom right of this video. You can select a slower playback speed. It's super helpful. If you need it, here's the move that counts. One, two, three, a five, six, seven, eight, a one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, five, six, seven, hook, one, two, three, Five, six, seven, and one, two, three, five, six, seven, and ha! Here are a few details that help Nicole and me get this done. You'll notice when I send Nicole in front of me, sometimes I rock step backwards, and sometimes I rock step forwards. Either one is correct, but something that helps me is when I rock backwards with my foot, my body moves forwards. This creates the stretch that helps move Nicole in front of me. When I rock forwards, I like to rock step sideways, as in my direction is forward, but the shape of my body is sideways. Sometimes I even step in front of Nicole, so there's a straight line between Nicole, me, and Nicole's destination. Notice when I rock step forwards, it opens the right side of my body up, causing a sideways rock step for Nicole as well. I just have to make sure my step isn't so large, it eats up all the space, so I try to step close to under my hips. 
Likewise, Nicole's body is sideways, even though their direction is backwards. In order to bring Nicole back, I try to connect for the rock step early, when I'm very close to them. That way I can build the signal that Nicole should come back over my entire arm length, hopefully making it soft and gradual. When it's time to stay in open, I find Nicole's left hand as soon as it comes off of my shoulder and immediately hold it close while extending my left. This initiates that crossbody connection. You can see how now we're basically doing solo Charleston just like we did earlier in this video. As you both feel more comfortable, try the entrance and then just stay in open position front to front Charleston until the leader initiates the exit with that nice juicy rock step. to really connect your arms and your legs, that feeling is what makes this whole movement possible. After the entrance, that front to front Charleston is very light. You're really just doing basic Charleston while holding each other. If you're feeling comfortable with that, take this front to front Charleston and walk it. You can go as far as you have space. Something that seems obvious that helps me lead this move is that I'm not trying to be tricky. I'm trying to be obvious. I need to move forward and backward with confidence. And even though my hands are in motion, they are trying to seek out the front or the back of Nicole's hands, depending on which way we're going. Nicole is staying centered between their hands. If the whole shape moves, they move as well. If you want more information about this connection, I have a whole video on frame linked in the description. In this video, Brooks and I explain this exact same move. All right, let's get into it. The star of the show, hacksaws. According to what I've seen in vintage footage, it's very common to do closed position hacksaws. Here you can see Almond and Willow May Ricker killing it in Hell's a Poppin'. Nowadays, in my experience, it's much more common to do hacksaws in open position. They're basically the same thing. They're both super fun. It's just the ones in closed position. Hacksaws have this beautiful, exciting, hacksaw, punching kind of motion that's led exclusively by confident, well-timed motion and connection to self. So let's do some solo footwork so we can feel that feeling. Again, start with two basic Charlestons. Here we go. A one, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. One, two, three, switch. Ha, 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 hey! In this footwork, we're doing an eight count version. One, two, 
three, transition. But you can do as many or as few kicks as you want. It's very, very flexible. I really love it as a six count because I love six count. Some tips for efficiency. Hacksaws can be very exhausting. So here are some tips that I do to keep my hacksaws more restful and as efficient as possible. For me, in order to kick high, it's easier to lean back or lean forward. I also think it looks pretty cool. Here, Almins adds height to his backwards kick by kicking slightly sideways. To keep the kick stable and easy to control, rather than kicking at the knee, I'm trying to draw a line from my butt to where I want my kick to go. I feel that this makes my leg more still, so it's easier to hold. Admittedly, this technique is more obvious when I kick backwards. When I kick forwards, it looks like I'm kicking from the knee, but I swear I'm thinking of the same thing in both directions. And of course, like all things Charleston, that little bounce with my standing leg helps with the balance micro adjustments, giving me that extra rhythm and buoyancy I need to get those high kicks. I want that bounce to have a lot of fire in my legs and butt, but I want to keep my head and shoulders pretty smooth. All right, let's do it with a partner. Here are hacksaws from a bunch of different angles. Nicole and I do both eight count and six count hacksaws. Good luck. Honestly, if you've gotten this far, I think the main thing you can do is just do it a lot and let your body get a chance to learn. When I lead this move, I focus on starting the arms early enough for my follow to feel and respond. When I follow this move, I think about relaxing and feeling the timing of my arms. I try to let the tail wag the dog and see how my moving arms change the timing of my legs. For both leaders and followers, timing is essential. Really lock into that rhythm. And there you have it, hacksaws. Now to tell you the truth, when I first learned this move as a follow, I thought it was choreography. I did not have a strong enough crossbody connection, so I did not see how it was possible to lead and follow this move. It's not choreography, it's not magic, or not any more magic than dancing in general is. Just keep dancing and your body will get more and more connected to itself and this move will make more and more sense. I hope you had fun and learned a lot. If you did, click like and subscribe and comment and do all the YouTube algorithm stuff. Half of the money that I get from this channel goes towards organizations that support African diasporic artists and art because Lindy Hop is a black dance and that's very important. The music is the Brooks Promo Orchestra. There's a link to where you can buy it in the description. And the best way to learn how to dance is to dance.